Oh my God, no way. Will it be the slowest car on the Draghi leaderboard? Will it even drive? <laughs> is it even gonna drive? I don't know. This is a super rare car, isn't it? Super rare. <laughs> Can you buy a car with less than 20,000 miles for less than a thousand pounds. I don't think that's possible. I don't actually think that's possible. But I have just had quite an interesting message from one of my followers on Instagram who said, Calvin, I've got a Rover 45. It was my granddad's car. He sadly passed away. And it's only done 15,000 miles. He's saying that we buy a car, I've offered him 1,300 quid for it, which is, makes the challenge a little bit difficult if it's, not less than a grand. I can't buy it. I'm gonna have to buy something else. But this seems like a proper cool car. Good mileage, one owner from you, and it's a V6. Surely we can get a deal done. So let's just hope for the best. I'm gonna give him a call. We're we'll getting get on with a little intro because my office is that. Do a little cinematic intro, and then I'm gonna give James a call and hopefully get a deal done. Right, so my little challenge to buy a car below a thousand pounds with less than 20,000 miles. I, uh, we're gonna call this the banger of the week, but it's gonna be the banger of the week because it is gonna be an amazing car, providing I can get one for less than a grand, all right? So James, let's go back to his message. I have messaged him back, by the way. The car looks all right. Rover 45, two litre V6. He's in Devon. He's in Devon. So he's saying, we buy the car, I've offered him 1,300 pounds, yeah? That's a generous offer from we buy the car. So I've got to try and beat that, ain't I? Look, he sent me his number. Let's give him a call. That is funny, man. Well, that's wicked though. It's, it's probably, was, it's possibly the lowest mileage car I've ever had going by the age of the car. That's not many miles at all. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it yet, but it will be um, an interesting car too to buy. We're gonna, we're gonna call it the bang of the week, but that might be a bit brutal. I think it's gonna be quite, a, it's gonna be an all right car. I don't think anyone's even sat in the back of it, really. It's really? Years. <laughs> really? Well, all right, I'll, um, I think we're gonna organize a driver for Thursday. Are you, is anyone around Thursday? Uh, Thursday, could it possibly be on Friday at all? I'll find out and I'll confirm back. All I'll right. Yeah, oh well, you need to get on it, mate. Get on it, pull your finger out. Hit that subscribe button. So is everyone watching this video. <laughs> I do want to ask one more thing. We kind of set ourselves on a mission to get a, a, a car with less than 20,000 miles for less okay. less than a thousand pounds. So would, yeah. would you take 999 pound for it? What, 99p? And, <laughs> yeah, all right, 900, 999 pounds and 99p, would you take that for it? <laughs> Wicked. All right, cool. That's brilliant. <laughs> so, job done. £999.99. pence. That does literally make it less than £1,000. Obviously, we've not seen it yet. It's probably a bit crazy buying a car on Tina. Wouldn't recommend doing that, but you can do all your checks beforehand and sort of hope for the best. I'm going to send the driver there. We're going to get it back and just hope that when it arrives, it's a decent car. I'm actually quite interested or excited. Is, that, is excited? Excited is probably the wrong use word intrigued to drive a two litre v6 20 year old rover with 15,000 miles we'll also get it in for an mot in this video and see if it passes what do you reckon is it gonna pass no idea we'll fast forward to a few days when it arrives <laughs> So here it is then, my 51 play, Rover 45, two litre V6, uh, with 15, let's confirm the exact mileage. The exact mileage is, I need the key, need the key. There it is, by the way, Amar put this um, shelf together the other day. I said, Amar, can you just quickly put a shelf together? He said, yeah, yeah, I come over. I said, Amar, do you think there's anything wrong with that shelf? And then he was like, nah, nah, it'll be fine. And then look, this one here, yeah. Yeah, so if you need shelves building, don't. Um, contact them all. Anyway, uh, Rover 45, here we go. Let's look at the mileage, the exact mileage of this car. Drum roll, drum roll. It's got a bit of mold, we've got mold. We're gonna clean this car in this video because it does, it absolutely needs a clean. I was warned that it was a bit dirty. I'm guessing they've just given it a little, maybe a little garden hose down. The mileage is 15,313 miles. I cannot believe how low the mileage is on this car. What I do want to talk about before we go for a wander around the car is, 
<laughs> the performance figures, yeah, because I just found a little old review on Parker's. Shout out to Parker's. Truly a V6 connoisseur. Is this a connoisseur? I don't even think it is. We're going to call it the British Racing Green Edition. It's got the, it's still got the original Rover sticker on the back window. Check that out. Two litre V6 connoisseur, 2000 to 2004 is when they made these cars, yeah. <laughs> this is brilliant, man. Less than a grand, £999.99. pence. But I did pay 300 quid to get it delivered, which was an affordable amount of money, but it does push the overall budget up, I suppose. I could have picked up myself though, can I? Yeah, I'm just busy. But, um, 147 brake horsepower. That is massive for a two litre V6 engine back in them days. By the way, it was, it, is it even necessary for it to be a V6? I love that it's a V6. It's massively over-engineered. Most two litre engines are four cylinders at most. 431 miles to a full tank, apparently. I'll take, I'll, like, I'll trust you, because I'm not going to be doing 430 miles in this car. Uh, not 60 in nine and a half seconds. We need to do draggy times on it, don't we? Well, I looked at the weight of it. 70 litre fuel tank, so it's got a big, big juicy fuel tank. 1265 kilograms this way, so it ain't a very heavy car. Will it be the slowest car on the draggy leaderboard? Will it even drive? <laughs> Is it even going to drive? I don't know. So James did warn me there was a bit of body damage here and there, and there, as you can see, there's a few cobwebs and all this look at this wonderful stuff it's going to be an absolute pleasure cleaning this car like that there it's a bit like scrubbing behind your ears that is it's going to be nice isn't it it's going to be nice just getting all that out <laughs> tires look good so we need to get it mot as well has it even got an mot dum, dum, dum. <laughs> i should have remembered that from the beginning part of the video that makes this video even more interesting so it has no mot so we need to get it cleaned we need to get it MOT to see if it passes, and we need to go for a very, very quick drive in it to see if it does, um, see if we can do draggy time to see how well it performs. We're going to do it elegantly though, yeah, because James has also messaged me to say his Nan's going to be watching this from her care home, and I want to make Nan proud, James, yeah? I want her to be proud of the car. This sort of stuff is cool, man, all right? So we're going to do it elegantly. That's what I say, 20 to 70 mile hour draggy times, and we're going to try not to break the car, right? I don't think it's going to break because I reckon it's a good car. When I think of old Rovers, I think of head gaskets. That's exactly what I think of. So when I consider that this car could be absolutely fine, wow. Oh my God, no way. Bloody mint, mate. It is mint. <laughs> I'm going to show you the service history in a sec as well. The service history on this car is unbelievable. So I'll show you that shortly. Dipstick, not me, not <laughs> this thing here. I mean, yeah, there's oil in there. There is oil in there, which is good. That's the correct place for oil to be. Look at it, yeah. Lovely jubbly. Right, so, do you know what's frustrating about this car? Well, not this car, actually, this video. is. This video probably won't get a crazy amount of views, but it deserves views, man. This is a gem, isn't it? This is an absolute gem. And do you know what? The story of this car, the fact that James's grandparents have run around in this for so long, it deserves views, man. It deserves exposure. So if you're um, you know, you're in a WhatsApp group or you're on Facebook or you, you've got Instagram, just give it a little share, man. Tell, tell everyone to come and admire the British Racing Green Rover 45. Tell them it's a V6 as well, because they'll be proper excited about that bit, yeah? Just do that, do it for the Rover. Continue having a wander around. Like this is original factory spec. It's got the original wheels, 16 inch alloy wheels, alloy as well, chrome mirrors. Like Audi must have jumped onto that, that wave back then. Cause that is like an Audi thing, but it ain't an Audi thing Audi because you must have copied Rover. Let me just show you the service book. Let me show you the service book. So look, big 45 on the front, no former keepers, zero. The previous registered keeper, none. Zero former keepers, that is so nice. How often do you see that? Especially on a car of this age. That's better. Rover stamp, Rover stamp, Rover stamp, 04, 05. Rover stamp, Rover stamp just more stamps then we've got we're going into like a local garage by those things now another one another one 18 19 and the mileage is by the way look at this look at the difference in mileage 12,224 um, in 2017 and then we've got 13,260 in 2018 and then you can just see look at the difference in mileage between that one there and that one there and then moving on oh that must be the most recent one 2019 2019, it looks like that was the most recent service, so it could, could maybe, be, <laughs> could do a reserve service on time, but mileage-wise, it definitely doesn't. Spec, let's talk about spec. Full leather, heated seats. It's got an automatic gearbox as well. It's probably got about three or four gears. I don't know exactly how many gears it's got, but it's got an automatic gearbox, which I think is actually quite cool. You know, sometimes people say that their car hasn't had anyone sit on the back seat. That's such a common thing in the car world. There's never had anyone sat on the back seat. To tell, to test if a car has anyone had anyone sat on the back seat, the best way to test it is just open the back door and see if the rubbers are sticky. 
And see, James did say to me, Calvin, I'm telling you now, the seats have never been sat in in the back. Let's have a look. Look how sticky that is. Look, Th that door was stuck on, literally stuck on. Let's test this one. Look, stuck. That one was less stuck because that's obviously the driver's side. So I'm guessing they would have used it somewhere to just maybe plonk a, a bag or something every now and then. But look, them back seats, I mean, they're mint. They do, could do with a little wipe down, but they're mint. They're mint, man. <laughs> And it's got four electric windows. We've not even heard it start yet, have we? Two keys, by the way. Very nice. Hashtag key check. Remote central lock-in. It's actually got remote central lock-in. Oh my God, it's got a sunroof. Oh no way. What a result. We've got a fully working sunroof. This car has got some serious spec. Remote central lock-in, heated seats, an electric sunroof, and four electric windows. Wow. Ready for the engine start, yeah? Key is in ignition. Three, two, one. Is it gonna start? Listen to that. <laughs> that is perfect, isn't it? Wow, so I think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut to, we've got an ABS light on the dash, so that's probably gonna cause us an issue on the MOT. Will it fail on that? Should fail on that, we'll soon find out. Anything else I wanna report? It's got a tape cassette radio. AC, it's got aircon. No way has this car got aircon. It doesn't look like it's um, the head gasket's gone. It does start. The battery has got life in it, which I'm quite impressed about. It's even got fuel in it. I think now what we need to do is cut to a cinematic scene of the car being cleaned, and then we're gonna take, take it for a little drive and do dragon times in it. is now clean it's absolute i was gonna say it's absolutely minute it ain't minute it's tidy it's very tidy for a 20 odd year old car it looks wonderful and as you wander around it could probably do with a, a couple of proper detailers spending a whole day on it which i mean i could do but there ain't gonna be no money in it for me so i've given it given it a good clean i say i the valetors have i've actually been away for a few days i've come back and i am just as surprised about how beautiful this car is as you lot are right so i've been blessed with the presence of this car looking clean today. Tires look good, a bit of tire shine on them, don't they? Bit of a scuff on the rear court there, which we knew about anyway. Um, but I am really impressed with it. Something else, um, I, when I arrived back yesterday, come in the post, is uh, James actually sent me another key. So I think we've got three keys and three fobs in total, which is quite impressive. And we've got service vouchers from back in 2001, which is quite impressive. Yeah, proper Rover MG stuff, yeah. Something else that I just thought was quite interesting about this car is the plate, because back when this plate, or this year in 2001, the plate prefixes changed. It went from A to Y and ended on Y. And then the last one before this was obviously Y Reg. And then 2001, halfway through, they created the new 51 prefix. So it went 51, 02, 52. That was quite a big talking point in the car world. So anyway, what I want to do now is I'm going to pull up the draggy leaderboards and I want to do a 20 to 70 mile an hour draggy test in this car to see if it's the slowest car on the draggy leaderboard. Now, currently the slowest car on the draggy leaderboard is a 52 paper sack with 110 brake horsepower. That done it in 14.37 seconds. Now, I feel like this is going to be quicker than that. Do you reckon this is going to be quicker or slower? What do you reckon? We're going to find out shortly. Something else I want to do, because it's a, a luxurious rover, we're going to hit the bumpy road, yeah, and see how well it performs, how well it floats over them bumps. So I think it's going to deal with it really well. By the way, the Passat video, if you didn't see that, we actually compared a range test on an old 1.9 diesel Passat, compare it, compared it to a Tesla. Which car do you think has done more miles out of 20 quid's worth of charge or diesel? Other way around. Go and check it out, all right? Um, let's get it started and hit draggy times, yeah? Let's go. Do you know what, I just had a customer turn up and he wanted to quickly do, get a price on a pie exchange. In fact, before we talk about the pie exchange, that Merc's proper cool, isn't it? That's a proper cool car. It's a 1.6 petrol, I think. I took it home the other day. It's um, very slow, but it looks the part. Them wheels look wicked. Boston wheels, yeah, on it. Very nice. But yeah, customers just turn up. He's buying a Transit. He wants to part exchange his old caddy van. I thought I'd include it in this video. It's probably going to be a very long video because this caddy van is special. It's very special. <laughs> Come and have a little look at it. Here she is. 56 plate caddy van covered in rock. I think this is the good side. This is its good side. Come and look at the bad side. There it is. It's got an odd wheel. It's got rust everywhere. It's got some kind of, what wheels are they? Are they Passat wheels? I recognize them wheels from somewhere. And then on the inside, filthy dirty. How much do you reckon I paid for it? Come around to the driver's side, 
come round to the driver's side because you ain't seen the golden piece. Oh, hold on, mirror's broken. I think both mirrors are broken. Yeah, both mirrors are broken. Audi S3 seats. It's even got a headrest delete on the passenger side as well. So yeah, do you think this is worth more or less than a Rover? That's the big question. I'll tell you how much I paid for it. I paid 500 pounds. In fact, no, I paid a little bit less than that, about 448 quid, because it worked out as part of the deal. But again, it's done 140,000 miles. Anyway, let's jump in the Rover and go and see how slow it does 20 to 70 mile an hour. Almost got the MOT, didn't we? So I'm um, currently at the MOT station at the bottom of our road. We're at Binker, at SMC, Stratford Motorist Centre. Um, I reckon it's going to pass. I actually think it's going to pass. I've just drove it for like a couple of hundred yards from the end of the road to here. It drives all right, um, but we shall soon find out. Ready? Three, two, one. Annoyingly, the Rover failed on brakes and obviously the ABS light on the dash. But we have had all the work done and I'm yet to get the bill. Let's now hit the road. Right, so here we are. We are on the little CCD route. We're going to turn left at the roundabout. <laughs> I can report that this car is not fast at all. Ready for full throttle? Three, two, one. I know it's very difficult for you to sort of feel the speed of a car through a camera, but trust me, this thing is not quick at all. So. It does have an automatic gearbox, so it's got a bit of a benefit over the Passat, because <laughs> uh, the Passat was a manual, so it might do that. I don't know, I don't know, but um, yeah, it's slow. But one thing I can say is this thing is absolutely mint, man. You look at the dials, they are mint. You look at the steering wheel, it is mint. The lever even feels fresh. I'm like slipping through that lever, but nothing, mate. Around the uh, little S-Bend here, the famous S-Bend, it's handling all right, you know, it's floating around the bends like you'd kind of expect it would. <laughs> and uh, let's quickly cut to the bumpy road. And that's it, we are here now, indicator on. Turning right onto the bumpy road in the floaty Rover. Here we go, the awful bumpy road, look. Just doing that. It's lovely, mate. Proper, proper noise. Now, the big question is, can we do draggy times without it overheating? Because that's what I've had on my mind the whole time driving down here. So um, there's only one way to find out. Let's now do draggy times. Three, two, one. Come on. We're going to do three runs. Gearbox is lovely. Gearbox is absolutely spot on. Waiting. Any second now. There we go. Gently does it. We've got 14.37 seconds to beat. And run number one, we've done it in. Beep. So, let's put, a, put my foot down again, just have a feel for that power. Feel that power, man. So, we did do draggy times. We normally do three runs, but on this occasion, we only done two, okay? The reason for that, simple reason for that is, we basically, we run out of roads. <laughs> we run out of roads. So uh, I've done two runs and I was actually quite happy with the two runs that we've done. So it was 14.37 seconds to, to beat, we, or we had to get quicker than 14.37 to beat the uh, Passat. And run number one, we've done it in 13 point, let's quickly look, 13.89 seconds. So this is quicker than a 110 horsepower manual gearbox Passat, yeah? Then we've done a second run and the next car in line was the Audi A3 diesel. Modern car, man. Surely we can't beat a 1.6 litre turbocharged diesel Audi. Guys, on the second run, we done 20 to 70 mile an hour in 12.92 seconds. So this is the third slowest car from the bottom of the Draghi leaderboard, which I think is really impressive. And you know what? I'm just impressed overall. It's got, the car's got an MOT now. It's all cleaned up. It's looking good. And I think it's going to make a great car for whoever buys it, because that's, that's the plan with the car. It's just going to go up for sale. I've got no idea. I mean, it's a very difficult car to put price on. But the nice thing is, we've bought it from James, a subscriber of the channel. I hope I hope I've made you proud, James, you and your family. I hope you enjoyed watching it on YouTube. Um, they got what they wanted for it. We're going to sell it, and it's going to definitely do someone proud, proud the other end. We've got a YouTube video out of it as well which is entertained you lot and then thirdly we're going to earn a little margin in the middle which will go towards paying a few bills at Binker so it's been a positive experience all round the car is now going to go up 
for sale. Hopefully by the time this video goes live, it'll be sold. But if it's not, it will be available at my website, bingo.co.uk, all right? So guys, I'm gonna wrap it up and leave it as that. Is that everything? I think it is. It's been, a, <laughs> it's been an eventful one. Thank you very much for watching. Let's get that sunroof back open. Sunroof on it. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did like this video, do me a favor, hit the like button, hit subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.